Greetings to you, beloved people of God. I say good morning in the name of Jesus. Once again, time for us to go into morning charge with Mountain Top Life Daily Devotional. Today, Wednesday, August 9, 2023. The Lord bless you as you take your seat, carry your Bible and your devotional book. If you don't have one, please try to get a copy. The year is moving on. It's good for us to be partakers of the blessings from these messages and the Word of God. I pray you'll be one in the name of Jesus. Be a peacemaker. That is our title today. What a wonderful title. Be a peacemaker. God will make all of us peacemakers in Jesus' name. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning. Thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for counting us worthy to be one of those people that will be people of your presence this day. Lord, continue to glorify yourself in our lives in the name of Jesus. As we go into your word, Lord, take your place. Teach us by ourselves. By yourself, open our hearts to understand it. I pray for your people. As they listen, as they watch, as we go together, Lord, let these words be fruitful in our lives. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. Be a peacemaker. This is such a wonderful title. It is not just um, for us to be peacemakers, to be, to be a peacemaker. It simply means for you to make peace, you must be a peaceful person yourself, myself. Look at the memory verse. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Matthew 5, 9. Are you a child of God? Then you must be a peacemaker. Because that's your title, that's your hallmark, that's your trait, that's one of the characteristics of what makes you a true and genuine child of God. And as a peacemaker, you are blessed. I'm also interested in today's motivational quote. It says, be a peacemaker, not a peace taker or a peace talker. Oh yes, I just added that. Somebody can just talk peace, but not really make peace, you know. And somebody can also be a peace taker. When you get to somewhere, instead of making peace, you actually help to withdraw peace. I want to say this morning that being a peacemaker is not a title, is not a name. It is by action. It is in doing. With your permission, a person can bear uh, sister peace or brother peace. I don't mean any harm by that. But truly, that you bear such a name does not make mean that you do it. But here God is telling us, be a peacemaker. It is in the doing, not just by bearing name. So how can we be peacemakers? Who are we? What are we supposed to do to be peacemakers? Today, our first scripture is Judges 4, 6 to 16. We're looking at the life of Deborah, a prophetess and a judge. Of course, from what is written about this woman, we could conclude, we can conclude that she was a peacemaker. Because the Bible tells us that she will sit under the palm tree and then when her people come to her, she will settle their disputes. Don't forget she's a judge. And being a prophetess, she could see beyond the physical. So if Deborah was a woman that settled peace in her community, then it means she brings or she, she brought at a time peace to people. 
when there are relationships that are giving way, break it up. As a judge, as a prophetess, as a mother in Israel, Deborah helped to mend the fences. It helps to resolve the differences and she will bring them back again. No wonder they call her the mother in Israel. She was a woman who was not busy doing nothing, busy talking, being a busybody, chatterbox, you know, going from one home to another, backbiting, blackmailing, slandering people, speaking negative words, and be malicious or anything evil. Rather, she was a lover of peace, and not just a lover of peace, she was a peacemaker. No wonder when it was time to war, to go to war, and Barak could not go alone, he invited Deborah, and Deborah sought the face of the Lord, and they defeated Sisera, was yet another woman, that put him to death, finally, Jael. But what are we learning here? It is that we should, learn, we should, as Christians, bring peace to the life of people. Beloved, if you are truly a child of God, who believes in one and only Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, the Bible calls him the Prince of Peace, Emmanuel, God with us. Go to Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. You see that title there even before he was born. Why? He came to make peace in the world. You will see it in the book of Ephesians chapter 2, where through his death, he reconciled us to God and made peace between us and God. He broke down the wall of partition that was between us, that our sins will not make us to access God. He removed every hindrance so that we can call on the name of God. Of the Lord and God will answer us. In John 14, 27, John chapter 14, verse 27, said, I won't leave you comfortless. You will not be alone. I'm going to leave you in the hand of the comforter, Holy Spirit. And today, beloved, we're in that dispensation. So God our Father is the God of peace. He himself is called Jehovah Shalom. God of peace. Jesus Christ, Prince of Peace. And of course, we have the Comforter himself, the Holy Spirit. He won't comfort without bringing peace. And so, anyone who will claim to be a child of God, who will claim that Jesus is, is Lord and Savior, and that the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, lives inside of him, will definitely be a peacemaker. You can't be a troublemaker, because that's the opposite. God wants us, nothing short of this, to make peace wherever we are, in our home, workplace, marketplace, church, community. Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 to 16. The Lord says, ye are the salt of the earth, ye are the light of the world. It comes with peace. In verse 16, says, let your light so shine, so that the name of God, your Father, will be glorified in heaven. You cannot confess the name of Jesus and that you will be a troublemaker. No. Salt gives taste. Salt preserves. That is the life also of a peacemaker. Light illuminates. It shines bright. It brings life. The same thing with salt. That is the life of a peacemaker. And so if you must truly be a peacemaker, you must be a carrier of peace. And God's kind of peace for that matter. Shalom. In your daily activities, in your relationships. Let me say, people of God, that we cannot do without conflict. As long as we are on earth, as human beings. We will have differences with ourselves. But what God is expecting for us, from us, He says offense will come. But the truth, we have to take time and resolve it. And then we'll get back to who we are and what we are. So that we can live amicably in peace with ourselves, within our home, within our families, community, workplace, and then in the church of God, which is the family of Jesus. I pray God will make us peacemaker indeed, in the name of Jesus. we we'll take a short break for now. Stay connected. Please 
it is important to we get to the root of this together. We'll come back again shortly. Thank you. The 2023 70 Days Fasting and Prayers of the Mountain of Fire and Miracles Ministries is on. Fast breaks, 5 p.m. Mondays and Fridays and 2 p.m. every other day. Remember to get your 70 Days Fasting and Prayer Guide booklet for this event. The 2023 70 Days Fasting and Prayers. Prayer Battle 4. Mountain of Fire and Miracles Ministries. Surely the Lord is here. Have you gotten a copy of the 70 Days Fasting and Prayers booklet? Get one today and one for a friend and have a guide into the 70 Days program. Get a copy from any MFM bookshop near you or visit www.mfmebooks.com. Be a part of this divine annual program. The Mountain of Fire and Miracles Ministry 70 Days Fasting and Prayers 2023 Prayer Battle 4 Available in English, French, Yoruba, Igbo, Hausa, Ethic, and Edo. Jesus is Lord. Mountain of Fire and Miracles Ministries. Surely the Lord is here. Praise the Lord. You're welcome back once again. Peacemakers, children of God. We just spoke about living amicably. Please write these ones now. Psalm 133, verse 1. First, Psalm 133 is very short, like three verses. Say, how pleasant and how good is it for brethren to live together in unity. This is the mind of God for the church. We need to be in unity. And we cannot be in unity except there is peace. I make peace, you make peace, we make peace together. And the peace reigns in our midst in our families, in our communities, in our workplace, in our nation. Don't say, well, there's trouble everywhere. You start it, beloved. If you start it, then you're, you're able to. It, peace, the peace of God is contagious. You can't be a troublemaker. Everywhere you get, there'll be trouble. But when you're a peacemaker, even when you get to where trouble is, the peace of God swallows trouble. It's, 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 it, it, it pushes it away. And for that, you know that people will always want you to come around. Right on Romans 12, 18. The Bible tells us clearly there. Say, if it be possible, as much as it lies in you, live peaceably with all men. So it means even in the world, there will be difficult people. Of course, we know, we see it. You play your role, be peaceable. Leave the other person, continue to pray or do everything that will make that person to change. If you have time, inquire the person, counsel the person. But make peace. Jesus was a peaceful person. Even with the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Yes, they may plan evil against them, but yet he will, he will still move around them. He, was a magne he had a magnetic, magnetic personality. That, because he is Prince of Peace. People draw to him by themselves. Is that the way people draw to you? Are you magnetic in your relationship? Or you are repellent? Repellent because people will not want to come to you. Oh, when they see you, it's that even if three or four are gathered, when you come, they will scatter. They will just go their way because they know you are going to cause trouble. If you are that kind of person, please, I beg you today, in the name of Jesus, make a change. Listen to the word of God again in Hebrews 12, 14. It says, follow peace with all men, even the difficult people. Find time, find a place for them. And then let me even encourage you or counsel you. Don't, whosoever, the Bible says, God hates the one who sows discord and brings strife among brethren. So if you see such a person, if you can't change him or her, then please don't become like him or her. Be a peacemaker, a peacemaker. Because the Bible says, follow peace with all men and holiness. The two are working together. One precedes the other. Don't tell me you are holy when you are not a peaceful person. 
You know, I was started by saying the peace you want to make is the peace you carry. It's a peace that is manifested in your life and in your relationship. And you, 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 you move around with people with that peace around you and all over you. And so, if you, that peace is there, then there's holiness. And of course, you'll be ready to see the Lord. I pray for you. Pray for myself. We shall see the Lord. In the name of Jesus. And anything that wants to stand against the peace of God in our lives, the Lord himself shall deal with them. In the name of Jesus. I said it, it comes from within you. Even God himself spoke in the book of Isaiah 26. 3, said, thou shalt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Do you trust in God? It will keep you in perfect peace. Doesn't mean you won't have trouble. Sometimes you will even put your trouble aside to go and help others and make peace. And the world will never forget you. Abraham made peace with Lord. When their, their heads met, their followers were going to be at loggerheads. Not because Abraham was older, but he was a, a friend of God, the Bible called him. So, he had to make peace. Conflict resolution. And by the time he said, let your men go this way, we go this way. But you made your choice first. You shouldn't have allowed Lot to do it. Should have said, I'm your uncle, so I'm going to take the first, to make the first choice. But with the spirit of humility and brokenness, the peace of God in him, he loved Lot. And so he told him, make a choice. Lot did. And of course, he chose by side. He chose what he thought was good, and that ended up being Sodom and Gomorrah. It was still the same Abraham that interceded. Else, Lot would have been des destroyed. Who are you, brother, sister? Would you do the same? Would you even intercede for that kind of cousin, or uncle, or brother, or sister, or auntie? Won't you say, well, can't you see what he did for me the other time? How am I going to do that? Remember. Sometimes we too fall short of God's glory. If it were not mercy, none of us would be standing. The Bible says, if God is to call on those who have sinned, who could stand? Nobody. Is by His mercies, which are every day coming up, that we are alive. Joseph, you can imagine. This was a man who should hate his brother with perfect hatred. This, they, they sold him to poverty. They believed that his life was going to be destroyed. Or he was going to be killed and never to be heard of. Because of his dreams. Because they never wanted him to be greater than them. But little did they know they were helping God to fulfill the plan that he had for Joseph. But that is not just it. Even Joseph himself. It was, it was, it was almost being molested by Mrs. Potiphar, he escaped, but he suffered in the prison for even not committing an error or a sin. But in the prison, remember, he was the lover, he was, he was a peacemaker. The prison leader and every man there, every other man there loved him. It was pleasant because his mind was committed to God. At the end of the day, what happened? He forgave his brothers. When those people were almost dying of guilt, he said, Am I God? Don't put me in the place of God. He forgave them and made peace with them. Are you a peacemaker? Do you divide the body of Christ? Do you mess up your relationships? Do you sow seeds of, seed of discord among brethren? Are you that kind of person that can sustain good relationship? Because there's something about relationship. You, it's like a garden where you sow seed. You water it. You, you, grew, you, you prune it so that it will grow and germinate and be fresh like, like flowers in a garden. Lovely, with sweet smelling aroma. Do you mess up relationship? Wound it? People that come around you, you create bad mind in them. Beloved, it's time to change. Or are you that kind of a person that people will love? Like I said, you ooze out your peace in you 
Because where there's peace, there will be love, there will be joy. And all the fruits of the Spirit, components of the fruit of the Spirit. And people who want to come around you. In your compound, the life you live, would they want you to follow you to church? Because you are not a peacemaker. But if you're a peacemaker, you don't even need to preach. Your life is already like an epistle to them. And they want to come to you. By the time you know it, they're already asking. They want to know that God who makes you so peaceful and so loving and so kind. In Proverbs 22, 19, the Bible says it is better to dwell in the wilderness than to dwell, than to dwell in, uh, than to live with a contentious and angry woman, even an angry man. But today I ask you, people of God, look at your life. Let all of us seek lasting and enduring peace through Jesus Christ, who is the Prince of Peace. He said in the book of Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28, he said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. What is it that is troubling your heart that will not allow the peace of God to, to stay? Today, the hand of the Lord will destroy it, take it away, and give you peace in the name of Jesus. Lay your troubles, lay your anxieties and worries at the feet of Jesus. And when you do, he will give you rest. His rest and peace are the same. He went on, he said, my, Lord, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. He said, learn of me, I'm, I'm lowly and meek. And you will find rest for your souls. May you receive rest in the name of Jesus. And when you find godly rest, peace is there. Stay peaceful in the name of Jesus. We're going on a short break and we come back to the final segment of this devotional. God bless you. Determined to move your family from mockery to miracles. Break every jinx and spell working against your family. Destroy every evil pattern working against your family. Break every family curse working against your family. Receive stolen and lost glory off your family. Put your family in the envelope of the God of Elijah. These six powerful agendas will be dealt with on the 9th, 16th, and 23rd of August 2023. It's the August Special Man Water Service. Team Uncage Your Family. Dr. D.K. Olukoya, the General Overseer, Mountain of Fire and Miracles Ministries, will be ministering live from the MFM International Headquarters, Lagos, Nigeria, 0430 p.m. WAD. The August Special Man of Water Trio. Come reposition your family with these divine steps. Align to put a family in place. This program will be available on all our social media platforms Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, and Mixlear. Don't forget MFM Television. Come fasting to this program with a list of family names, a bottle of oil, and of course, a bottle of water. Jesus is waiting for you. Mountain of Fire and Miracles Ministries. Surely the Lord is here. Praise the Lord. We've been talking at, on being a peacemaker. We have heard about Jesus, the embodiment of peace, the Prince of Peace himself, the giver of peace and peace himself. We've heard about Deborah, about Abraham, about Joseph, we've read about how brethren should live in Psalm 133, beloved. I like to read the word of Apostle Paul in the book of Philippians 4, 6, 4, verse 6 to 7. It said, be careful for nothing. That means take away anxieties. But in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Now he's talking to those people who for any reason you know, their heart is disturbed. He said, by the time you do, what's going to happen? And verse 7, And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. We all need that peace. But you must have it before you give it to another person. And it is only by going to God and seek it. Lay down all the worries. You know, in spite of the trouble and sufferings of Paul, he was an epitome of peace, a peacemaker. 
read through his writings, Colossians, Ephesians, he will greet people with grace and peace. Peace be multiplied unto you. Are you such a person? Today, beloved, take your time to resolve conflicts as soon as it comes. It cannot be come, but take time to do so. Wherever you find yourself, be a godly representative and ambassador of the kingdom of Jesus Christ, our Lord. So that when they see you, they know you're a child of God with your, in your behavior, con godly conduct. And you love men not because they are super, not because they are good, not because they are more godlier than you are or anybody, but because there's peace of God in you. And many will want to come to you to enjoy that same peace. Today, look at your life. Where it is you are peaceful, pray to have more to give to people. And where you have been working contrary, the Lord God Almighty shall deliver you and make you a true instrument of peace in Jesus' name. So I want us to pray, feel prayers, and you pray with me like this. Say anything in my life, working contrary to the peace of God. Today is your expiry day. Depart from my life to return no more. In the name of Jesus Christ, tell it whether it's the thought of your mind, whether it's the words of your mouth, whether it's your action, whatever it is, because it's all start from the mind. That thing that is stealing the peace of God from your life, so that you, you are not even at peace with yourself, not to talk of making peace with others. Today, let them go to come back no more. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You're going to pray another word. Say, Oh God, my Father, make me an instrument of peace. La cosita parosh. In the name of Jesus. Make me an instrument of peace, an instrument of peace, an instrument of peace in my family, in my church, in my nation, in my community, in my workplace, in my marketplace, wherever I find myself, in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth, beloved. Make me an instrument of peace in the name of Jesus. Where there is conflict, when you come, there will be peace. Where they, even, even, even when you're not there, people will call you because they know you bring peace. It shall be so in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Begin to pray a second. Begin to pray that let peace reign in my life, reign in my family. Prince of Peace, Jesus. But well, as you invite him, let him reign in your life, reign in your family, reign in your ministry, reign in your company, reign where you are working, reign all around you, in your community, reign in the church of God, reign in your country, in the name of Jesus. And it is so. Thank you, Master Jesus. Father, we just want to thank you. We we'll bless your name because you are God. We ask today, there is nothing we can do without your peace. We invite you, Lord Jesus, Prince of Peace, come into our lives, come into our homes, come into our, all that we do, come into your church, come into our nation, in our community. Thank you for taking over. Peace, shalom. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. And I beseech you, people of God, remain peaceful, continue in this peace, today and forever. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Stay blessed. God bless you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank God for the miracle of sleeping and waking up. I decree that today it shall be well with you in the name of Jesus. The Lord God that dwelleth in Zion will move you forward in a new way in the mighty name of Jesus. No evil shall befall you this day, neither shall any plague move near your camp. Wherever you go, the favor of the Almighty shall be upon you. Your life shall be plugged into the socket of divine favor, divine restoration, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. All the evil present in this day, I bind them and I cast them out. You shall not be part of the evil that is spreading around in the name of Jesus. The Lord will make you head and never detail in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I soak the whole of this day in the blood of Jesus. I soak the whole of this day in the blood of Jesus. You are going in your coming out shall be blessings. The hand of God shall be mighty upon you. I cover you and your family with the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Have a wonderful day, beloved. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen.